has won almost every acting award there is for his work in film, television, the stage. He can now be seen on Broadway starring in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels at the Imperial Theater. Please welcome our good pal, John Lithgow. <laughs> Such a large man. It's well, just refreshing. Most celebrities are tiny, tiny people. Your size, Conan. Yes, two, yes. Two big men. Most nights you watch this show, I'm cradling, like, first guest. <laughs> Hello there, little guest. But you, a large strapping fellow. Good to have you on the program. Nice to be back. You're, you're here in New York City. You're, you're working on this uh, play. You're having a good time. Are you running into any people in New York? Are you seeing any of your old friends? Well, uh, well, I, I don't know about old friends. Right. Lots of old friends. But I was, uh, I was in Bergdorf Goodman's returning some clothes right. recently. And who should I see but Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> With an aide and a security man. And you saw Schwarzenegger at Bur It's just yeah. not a macho place to see. I know. I, it was, it, it was a, a strange a disjuncture, but there right. he was. Right. And we recognized each other. I know him very slightly. And we sat there ch chatting, making small talk in the middle with, with all the salespeople gathering around watching. Right. And uh, he said he invited me to Sacramento, and I t invited him to my show. Right. I went upstairs afterwards where there's this open rotunda where you can stand and talk to the people down on the first floor. And there was a saleswoman at the other end, and she was saying to a, a colleague, did you see John Lithgow? And I thought, yes! That's... <laughs> you got, you got, yeah, exactly, that's I'm good. I'm thinking you... of running for governor. Yeah, you got the top <laughs> down. You know, it's so funny, because I ran into Schwarzenegger uh, once out in the real world, and it's so strange to see him in a common setting, because he's yeah. such an unusual... I saw him, I once, there's a little place on the east side, and I stop there sometimes in the mornings to get my coffee, and yeah. I stopped in to get some coffee, and I'm just sitting there, and you know you're not awake yet, and I have my coffee, and I'm just like sitting there with my coffee, I'm just having my first two sips, and all of a sudden I just sort of hear like, hey, I'll go there, yeah. <laughs> and I look around, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's just surreal to see him, because yeah. it's like seeing Bugs Bunny, you know, yes. in the morning. <laughs> And then he said to me, the strangest thing is, he said, like, uh, we had nothing really to talk about, so he went, oh, so you're having your coffee in the morning, ah? Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, coffee in the morning. He's like, yeah, it helps you wake up, ah? I'm like, yeah, it helps you wake up, yeah. Coffee helps you wake up, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then there was a long pause, he was like, yeah. <laughs> and then for a while, he and I were just making noise at each other. I on ya. But it was very odd. Has he come, now, did he, is he going to come see your show? Well, he better come to see the show. Uh, he hasn't come yet. We've only just opened. Right, so. right. That, now, do you... I'll tell you who's coming, though. Your next guest, Kevin Pollack, is coming tonight. And Smigel's parents. I just found that out backstage. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, so, uh, now, that's it. now, you know, the other thing, do you get nervous when there are celebrities sitting in the audience? Does that ever bother you? Does no, it throw you off your game? No, not really. Maybe it raises my game a bit. I right, don't know. It's right, a, right. And you can't see them too well anyway out there. Yeah, but if I came to the show, it would probably freak out the whole crowd. <laughs> oh, my God, it's him, the golden one. Um, <laughs> now, you're doing... I want to talk to you about this. You're doing a radio project that sounds interesting to me. It's, it's you're, for a radio version of Star Wars. No, no, that, I did that. You some, did it already. Some time ago, some yeah. Some time ago, you did a radio when, version of Star Wars. In the, in the early go-round of Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back... Oh, the I, first go-round, I okay. was the voice of Yoda. I was working with uh, John Madden at the time, who was directing it, and he was right. casting, couldn't find a Yoda. And, and you were the voice of Yoda? I was the voice of Yoda. Does he have a good Yoda? Can we hear it? Oh, impatient is he. <laughs> I, I said that to him, and I was, I don't know, when, when, when my kids were small and watched Sesame Street, I mastered all of Frank Oz's characters. Sure, yeah, yeah. Like Grover, I would say, now I am getting closer. Now I am getting faster. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that got me the gig as Yoda. Wow, good uh, for you. Frank, uh, it was beneath Frank's dignity, apparently. Right, yeah. Nothing is beneath my dignity. No. <laughs> yes, <you know? laughs> I've, I've gone far on that same credo, yeah. So, so that's interesting to me that you were doing plays, because Star Wars is such a visual story yeah. that it must... I can't... I'm, I'm yeah. imagining on the radio, like, I'm in a... Oh, look, there's a ship, and it's a really big, big ship. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. It worked, I, though, huh? It, it's fantastic stuff on the radio. I mean, right, right. We've all forgotten how great radio was uh, mm -hmm. 70 years ago before right. television. Because you had to along. fill in the blanks yourself. Yeah. You had to paint mind pictures. You should, you should do a, a blackout version of Conan O'Brien. Oh, I'll be on the radio someday. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'm the only one who's trying to work my way later into the night and then onto radio. Yes. And then I'll be going door to door to talk to you all. Uh, let's talk about Third Rock. People love the show Third Rock from the Sun, and now it's in. Uh... It's one of those shows that you know is just gonna be in repeats, and I mean this in a nice way, it's gonna be in repeats forever, it'll always yeah. be out there. Do you mind when you turn on the TV and you see a third rock? Does oh, it? no, I love watching myself on third rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really? one of, it's one of my secret pleasures, my guilty pleasures. Wow. Other people watch pornography, I watch myself. <laughs> Yeah. I, and I, I do both. <laughs> <laughs> I was in porn in the late '70s, um, but uh, but no, I would think that if you're if you're in th if you're watching yourself, doesn't it remind you of work, or do you do you have well, different associations? You know, or are you able to? I mean, the amazing thing to me is uh, how much I've forgotten of Third Rock. I, I will see an. Uh, I, I think I remember it all until I see an episode. Which is like all new to me. Maybe, maybe it wasn't even me. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, but you're actually able to watch it and say, "I wonder what's going to happen." Virtually, yes. That's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess I remember the the ten or twelve great Third Rocks, and I think I remember them all. But there were 138 of them. Right. So right. Uh, it's you know, and and they're wonderful. I mean, I, I really. I miss that show. Yeah. Do you see it you ever in a foreign country and you see it and like Yes, I've seen myself. In... Actually, I'm much better in French. I'll tell you a wonderful story, in fact. <laughs> I, I was in Paris, France, uh -huh. walking along Saint Germain des Prés, and this kind of haggard, thin, uh, intense man came up to me and he says, and my name is Cesare Ferrari. I am your voice in Italian movies. <laughs> and he had this desperation, like, when are you going to do another film? <laughs> I swear he, to God, he, he only does you. That's amazing. He's, he, he's my man. Yeah. I said, and I said, I hear you're better than I am. Yeah. He was very flattered. I met the woman who dubs my voice in other countries. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely old lady. I don't, know whether, like, I don't know whether he does third rock, but he. Right, right. I, he's very dismayed that I've turned my attention back to the theater. Well, you got to keep this guy alive. He's going to be, yeah, you need to pay his rent. <laughs> yes. Now, this, this, uh, this theater schedule you're on, uh, people don't appreciate it. It can be very different. It's the hours when you do yes, theater it's are a, quite it's, difficult. It's a very, very different life. The rhythm of your life changes. I, I, I can't eat before the show, so I eat after the show. I, actually, nowadays, I'm just turning in at 1230. I, I've become an addict of the first half hour of your show. Why the first half hour? <laughs> Aren't you well, just riveted by my performance? Well, uh, tonight I'll watch the whole thing, because I'm on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You'll watch up until you leave. You'll be yes, like, screw right. Pollock. That's You'll right. turn it off. <laughs> the hell with that guy. Well, uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, I want to go see this show. Oh, it's, it's now the most it, wonderful show. Well, you'll know I'm there. Uh, you'll hear the crowd. They'll be yes. very excited to see me. <laughs> gonna, uh, is now playing on Broadway at the Imperial uh, Theater, and you're a good man to stop oh, by. It's Always great a pleasure to see you, having Kona. you here. Always. John Lithgow, Kevin Pollack coming up. We'll be right back.